Hello. Hi, everyone. All right. So my my laptop wasn't going live, so I'm going to have to use my phone. And um, I just want to see, wait until some people get in the room. Um, because it is important that people know and see and see and see and see. So here we go. I've been getting channels for a while now, just downloads. This is actually only my second time where it like pretty much overtook everything. Uh, my mind, it just overtook me and I couldn't stop thinking about it until I actually wrote it down and really started thinking about it and then doing videos about it. That's when like all the, the, you know, the anxiety, I guess, goes away when I feel at peace. Okay, so I know that that is like, it's right, right? It's right. Um, I'm just still inviting people uh, because this is kind of, I'm just needing help, you know, from everyone else. So I'll just kind of just expose what I've been going through and see if um, you guys have anything uh, to input because we are all one and we are from multiple generations and we all have our own perspective on life because time here on earth, it's like a continuum and things seem to be, um, you know, a process. And we're, that's the process of slow evolution. Um, however, because we're in this new type of energy and this new paradigm, um, things are going to have to start accelerating. And we literally need the collective and a whole, all of us to do it together, to accelerate that process. Okay, I'm almost done. I really don't know who the hell to invite. <clears throat> but I just want to invite some people. I told a couple of my close friends. So, yeah. I hope this gets out and we can all work together to make some change in this fucked up situation. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I see there's a lot of people all over, you know, they're going through some transformations and transformation is hard all by yourself so you need other to participate in this huge transformation that we're going to be going to we're gonna be dropping into the winter you know so you know uh, it's choosing to see and live in someone was calling and it actually has to do with the movie I just saw um, that kind of helped bridge the gaps between everything that I've been like seeing and going through. Uh, so let me see here. Lennox keeps trying to call me when I'm on, I'm live on Facebook, Lennox. Just come on here. You don't have to wait because I'm doing things. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, what up, boo boo? Okay. Now I'm seeing the little writings. Hey, Jen, how's it going? Um, is that Colette? Yeah, hello, hello. Our galaxy is moving towards these things called the great attraction. Okay, great. I'm glad I got some people in here. I'm just going to start because people could replay. I don't look the greatest because I was busy all day. I've been busy for like the last three days. Oh, fuck, Lennox is here. That's probably why he's calling, but he, he he's going to have to just sit and listen then. Hey, Lenny, I'm, I'm, li I'm live right now. Oh, thank you for the CD back. All right, bye. Okay, so that that's funny. That's so, super weird. So this CD uh, was another one of the things that I, one of the freaking downloads I was getting. So see that guy? He has this three. It's a, it's a three. It's a sign that is in like, you know, Trekkies. They, they do it the uh, right side up, which means okay. So, and this is a two side. There's one side and two side. That's like the two different perspectives in the two worlds. And then we have this Grim Reaper. This is a band that I saw uh, in San Francisco on a day when I was getting a lot of downloads. 
So this is called the Sweet Reaper. And then it has a street sweeper. So it's a double meaning. So this could have a lot to do with twin flames too. And there's three. Three is a very important number and in uh, most um, energies, energetic religions and stuff like that. Uh, the Trinity, the, tri the big triangle I have on my ceiling, uh, the pyramids, okay, are in threes. And this is two sides. So what's three and two? That's, you know, five. So five is also a really huge number in this, uh, all, you know, transformation as well. So I'm just trying to bridge the pieces together. So just to touch base on kind of what I saw was, um, and I want to share some links so you guys can help me and do your own research but I can't do it alone and it's literally giving me anxiety doing it by myself. And I've had a lot of uh, clients hit me up and I've been talking to a lot of people. And so if we're all on the same page, then we might as well just come out and like figure it out together. So, okay. So synchronicities, exactly. Lots of synchronicities. So ha um, has everyone watched the just that movie, the Justice League, that superhero movie? Um, if so, this will make sense. So if you haven't watched it, maybe go watch it. And, um, and after you watch the video and then, um, th things will probably make more sense to you, uh, because you've already saw kind of what I saw because not everyone sees the same, right? We all have our own eyes and our own perspective, but we're all connected through this black hole in our eyes, right? It's called the, 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 the hole to the soul. And it's literally reflected in the sky and they're called black holes or wormholes. It, it, it bridges the gaps between two worlds. And so this is like the key to our uh, transformation into this new dimension uh, or this new energy. Okay. So, so the black hole runs through and it, and on each side of the black hole are two different energetic universes. Okay. So what this black hole does is it sucks in everything. It's like a vacuum. So it sucks in everything and light cannot live inside of this wormhole. Right. And then what happens is it just sucks everything from both sides. Now in that there's transformation because it goes from one energy literally to the other energy, but it takes like the dark night of the soul, right? So that's transformation. When people actually go through some dark ass periods in their time and they're just sitting around like thinking and thinking about everything that they've been through, they actually are getting to know their soul, their soul self, not their three dimensional self, maybe their higher self. Let's just call it a, like the, the, the higher self. Okay. That's, uh, our soul. Um, th this, you know, the I, okay. So now that I got that kind of out of the way, then there's this little thing called, I don't know if you guys heard of them, but they're called, uh, let me see. I'll show you real quick. They're called, uh, uh, tardigrades. Okay. They're these little, uh, these little things that are actually found everywhere in the whole universe. Okay. They actually look like a black hole. Look it up. I'll leave the link up below, but you could probably just look them up by yourself. So they're, they're water bears. Okay. So they, 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 they're literally everywhere. They live within us. They live all around us. They even live in the galaxies. So, I mean, we're all connected and this little guy is here to, to show us and through transformation too. So this little guy has four legs on each side. That's eight. Eight is associated with transformation and uh, that's Pluto energy. It's transforming into the new, right? And his little mouth is like black, like the black hole and the eye to the soul. So what this is exactly is bridging the gaps, right? So... In, in astrology, there's this thing called the 12 signs of the zodiac, okay? There's, there's 10 planets, and then there's two illuminaries. The luminaries are the sun and the moon. They literally mm, control everything in our small little galaxy. Well, with this sign, this 13th sign of Fucus, well, it's always been there. 
It's always been around it, before, way before 2011. However, they thought, well, we'll just throw it in there and throw everyone off because that's deception. It's called the dark energy that's trying to keep you from moving forward in life, right? Or moving to the next level or world. And those dates are literally right between Scorpio, the, the eighth house of transformation, and um, Sagittarius, which bridges the gaps. The opposite of Sagittarius would be what? The twins, which is Gemini, right? So Gemini is the messenger between the two worlds. So they kind of play hand in hand. Well, opposing a fucus, because a fucus is the god of heaven, okay? And Orion's belt, it's always been there. That's the opposite. That's the god of earth. So we are both heaven and earth. We're having this this experience, and that is just proof, okay? So if you take Orion back to Egypt, the pyramids, the three pyramids, right? Is it is it all tying in now? It is for me. So there's three pyramids, and I, can, I like to say the two big ones are the divine masculine and the divine feminine, which is a fucus, right? Then the other one is a blend between the masculine and feminine, which we both have here on earth. Because women, I think, let's say just has the masculine energy and then men have the feminine energy. Okay, it's weird. But feminine is descending while the masculine is ascending. Uh, yeah. So let's wrap our heads around that. That's kind of like I just wanted to update you on like that information. And all of that was written, and that's how we got all the religions, okay? So every single person has a different perspective. Just like I have, my, like I saw that movie, and I saw one thing. And the person I went with, he watched that movie, and he, he saw something else. But we both li literally talked about it together, and then this is how I got the information of my truth and his truth equaled the truth, which is helping me be able to break down what really is going on in this world because nothing happens for no reason. Everything are signs and synchronicities all around us. When movies are made, movies are made by man and the higher self of the man that wrote the movie. Whether he knows that that what he was doing, it could have been unconscious. Like, you know, the the the, the god of the sea, you know, Triton, Neptune, okay? Uh, with the fork and that was in the movie too and so all of these things are really just letting us know that we're we're all one and I'm drinking out of a toilet seat mm. I'm drinking Earl Grey anyways I need to wet my whistle but um okay so to the movie, I I wanted to explain maybe a couple, maybe, no, I think that's it. I'll just go straight into the movie. All right, so I drew up this little map. I don't know if you can see it. You have, okay, I'm going to set this down. All right, so characters. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the long-haired hot guy with all the tattoos, he's, uh, He's the god of the water, and it's ruled by Neptune. That's why he had that little fork, that symbolic fork, okay? He rules the unconscious, and the unconscious mind, um, illusion, delusion, uh, all kinds of things, right, that happen in water. Oh, water is emotion as well. Um, all right, next. The next character was uh, Superman. Oh, no, I'm sorry. One, Wonder Woman. Okay? Wonder Woman. That is the divine, uh, I think masculine or feminine. Okay? I think it's divine masculine. But we'll, we'll, we'll just get, let that go. This is Superman. And then Batman, which is the divine masculine or feminine. Because um, these just hold, okay, just because she's a woman doesn't mean, <clears throat> like the sex is a woman doesn't mean her energy is uh, the same. Okay, this is why there's different, you know, uh, people that associate with different energies. So let's just say that Wonder Woman is the divine masculine uh, 
And then Batman is the divine feminine energy. But physically, they're, uh, you know, opposite sexes because there's a lot of dichotomy in the universe. And then we have Flash, okay? So Flash is ruled by Uranus. It's the Uranian energy. It's the internet, okay? It's the collective, um, lightning speed, like cyber things, like we're doing right now, okay? So this is like the new type of stuff. Thor, yeah, Thor was better. Yeah, I, I, I like Thor, but this actually, this movie kind of bridged the gaps for me. Um, I, I fell asleep during Thor because I was like so drained and tired. All right, next is uh, the cyborg guy, Victor. Okay, so if you notice, he had all these eyes like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, hey, it's it's all, there, you know, there's no, I don't, I don't know. I think time is irrelevant um, in my world. Things happen like like three months ago in dreams and then they end up happening now. So I think it's just one huge continuum in this universe because the universe is expanding. But um, so this little guy right here, uh, the, the cyborg, he actually has a little story. So um, I'll get into the characters in a minute, but I just want to give you the big picture because it can get really confusing. All right, so... I explain Neptune, you know, the God guy, okay? Then the, the here's the three pyramids. Do you see it? The divine masculine, divine feminine, and then the man, which is Adam. You know, like the Adam and Eve, right? So you have the man, which is male and female physically. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you could call those Adam and Eve if you want, but they're the human form, and we hold our higher selves have the masculine and feminine. I think this is Orion because the Egyptians put those, you know, pyramids there. And that's a part of Orion's belt. It points right towards it. So that would be the, the God of war and earth in the masculine feminine energy. So, hey, Teddy, leave Lilith alone. Jesus. Having wars over here. Okay, so when you watch the movie, uh, that that cyborg actually his 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 third eye and his eye like change. So if you noticed that one eye was a human eye and one eye was like a future eye, and this one actually saw the 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 bridging the gaps, right? The higher the higher self, the third eye, like the things like the sixth sense kind of energy, right? And so I believe that these have to do with um, bridging the gaps in generations, which is going to help us ascend. Now, the opposite of um, Orion in that chart that I showed you before is a fucus, and a fucus is the god of heaven. So there's the god of heaven down here. That contains the divine masculine, the divine feminine, and then both. And guess what? We're all atoms. But not a D A M. It's atoms, and if we bridge, if we come together, right, the human existence here and our God consciousness come together, it creates a connection between worlds. Do you see that? And it's a cross, and this has been a huge symbol throughout time. I kept getting cross and a T, so. I don't know. I think I think this makes more sense to me. Okay. Now. Okay, what what these two characters are, Flash and Cyborg are are literally the the people here on earth that are the generation Y and G boomers and millennials because we're literally half of the old world and half of the new world because we're in between the worlds so we're like the 80s babies that's why they use like hell of like like older generation like our generation superheroes like superman batman and then they just came up to other kind of superheroes in the newer generations the millennials so we're the ones that are going to bridge the gaps between the old worlds because our children are literally they're living in the new world but we're still kind of in the old world and that's why they're all just like you know 
channeling into this uh, oasis, you call it. It's the, you know, the video game world because they can't handle um, uh, the old world, okay? Because they, they're not even a part of the old world at all. They're a part of the new world. And then like our grandparents and some of our parents are still stuck in the old world. And so they're trying to pull us. So we're being pulled in two different directions and it doesn't feel good, all right? Not for me, not for anyone. I have, you know... I see, I see things like between both worlds and I want to bridge the gap so I can transform and then be in the new world. You know, it's just like um, the wormhole and I was looking at that and oh yeah, the 13th sign. Oh yeah, so I just wanted to bring up, okay, so remember the 13th sign of Fucus and the opposite, that's the God of heaven and the opposite is the God of earth which is Orion. Well, the thir remember back, back in the days, um, there was, I guess, 13 colonies that was on the East Coast, okay? And in some part of the movie said we're going East, remember at the end? But um, yeah, because we're going back. Okay, so 50 states, we don't want to go backwards, we want to go forwards, okay? So there's dark energies that are trying to keep us in the old world um, all around, but... Uh, okay, so there's something called the Red Man, and I don't know if anyone's uh, looked that up. I, I was just told about it, but the Red Man's was literally a term used um, when some dark energies came in and were skinning Native uh, Indians in our, in, our, in our country. And I know we all have a lot of Native American in us here, Okay, because this was the original lands from, you know, the, our ancestors or whatever. And these dark energies, I don't know who they were, but they were trading money, okay, for, for these Indians to be all, like, skinned, pretty much. So, I mean, that's where the term comes from. And it says that, like, let's just say the atoms, uh, the evil type energy was trying to take over the natives that actually work with the plants and the animals and they worshiped, you know, they worshiped their environment. They loved their self. So they were connected to everything because that's how we're supposed to be. Then I was looking into, because this is a movie and it of DC comments, comics. Yeah. And DC stands for, um, detectives. Okay. Des detective comments. And also there was, um, uh, there's, okay, so red face. And then I started thinking, okay, how am I going to connect this to our United States? So the Redskins, okay. So Redskins is a baseball team in Washington. So that's kind of associated with this, like, this, like, just really, uh, cannibalistic, I, I, like, barbaric type of, like, earthly human, like that one little, you know, the dark earth, um, God, the one with the little thing in the movie that had all the little like weird flying things that were killing people. He's the one that wants to keep the darkness. Okay. So he's helping the old world, like dumb down everyone. Well, the opposite of Washington is Washington DC. And that's where the white house is. And the white house is just something that is, is money. Okay. So it's money. It's all about money. It's all about uh, control. It's all about fear. It's all about everything like that. And so that's just another type of, you know, false, like, light, in my opinion. And um, so that's a little bit of what I got out of that. And I probably sound nutso, but I am, and I don't really care because I'm awake and I see, and uh, I just want to help bridge the gap between our two worlds. So our, the old, you know, the old generations aren't, you know, feeling mm, alone or depressed and the new generations aren't feeling uh, crazy either. So if you see both worlds, you got to be uh, a leader and go out and share 
the news that we are all one. We are all connected. Have you ever read the Peppermint Bonner Soap? Yeah, I mean, that guy was an enlightened guy and he wrote all over that bottle. Whenever you're taking a bath, pick up that Bonner Soap Peppermint bottle and read it. That's what all this is talking about. So what connects us? energy and the energy that is in everything so there is my channel message and and the reason why I want all you guys to know right now is because it's gonna get only harder during the winter and mercury is in shadow right now and it's gonna start retrograding uh, on the third with uh, Neptune going direct, which is the the planet of uh, the water, you know. Neptune is like Triton, emotion, unconscious. So don't let your unconscious get the best of you, you know. Because you got to know and be strong in your beliefs and where you are heading and what you're doing and what your gifts are. Because we need to stand up for our inner higher self okay so don't forget and remember where you came from open your third eye and and how you do that is detoxify your body um, I have this stuff called collodial gold I take it helps to balance all the energies it you know help um, melatonin when you sleep so you're getting some good good sleep and your uh, penile gland is active. I don't know. I always say it wrong. I say everything wrong, but, uh, yeah. Woohoo. Okay. So I just want to give you guys a little analogy that I gave one of my clients. I think it'll help like kind of bridge the whole thing I've been talking about. I like, uh, using physical things like, because we're physical things, but we're literally like energetic beings and, uh, we need to use both worlds. Okay. We need to use a three dimensional world to help bridge the gaps between the five dimensional world. All right. So here's my little analogy. And I think everything is one darkness and light are all one yin and yang are all uh, one. Hey, David. Uh, all right. So can you see boop, boop, boop. with all these shadows, you know, sorry. There's going to be shadows. It's just a part of life. I don't even like saying life anymore because, you know, we're in this physical reality. So that means that we're, we're, we're dead to the, uh, like, let's say galaxy, like the unseen world we're dead to. But then when, when we enter into our mother's womb and we come here, we're dead to the unseen world that we came from and we're alive here. So it's kind of subjective to me. Oh, also the wormhole, I was thinking about like, like how mothers, you know, carry their children, right? They have this, uh, it's that little umbil umbilical cord. That's the cord that's providing that baby life. And then when it literally leaves the water sack, which is, you know, another environment, another world, it comes out and, and the baby, cries because it's transformation and it's painful and that's what we're going to be going through this winter and then it snips its life force off so that little that little um you know uh umbilical cord that is a wormhole of creation okay we need a man and a woman to create we need that wormhole that darkness that black it's uh, you know, it's just, you need that. Oh, oh, and another one. I got a good one. Uh, you're using peanut butter. Nice. Okay. So, uh, I was at Sprouts and I look, I just want to get some asparagus. Well, I saw a white asparagus and I'm like, what the heck? I've never seen a white asparagus in my life. So I picked it up and then I picked up my phone. Thank God for Uranus, the planet of uh, freaking technology and future. And um, like flash, right? And I get it and I'm like, oh, how does this even happen? How does this white like grow? 
Okay. So then I like, I like, looked it up and it says that the white asparagus is only grown underground where there's no light. That's the wormhole. That's the umbilical cord, right? And what is white? It's all color of the rainbow. So it's literally the godlike energy. So you have to have light and dark. And then the uh, green asparagus is sun. It gets sun, so it gets the, what is that stuff called? Um, chlorophyll or something from the sun, the photosynthesis stuff? Yeah, so that's green, and that actually rules the, the heart, okay, the heart chakra. And uh, that's ruled by the, the sun, right, the sun energy. And uh, what is our planet? It is green and blue, which is blue is like sapphire, right? It controls your communication with your voice and your higher self as well. So uh, ruby's red. Okay, so that's the root. Ruby, red. Um, that's the root chakra. That actually roots and grounds you. So that's what is happening to me right now. I have been so much like you up here in this unconscious or Neptunian world where I'm just feeling like crazy. And then I had to like ground myself with the root and then my heart is, is like ruled by the green. So I am all of this planet that we're on and I just connected two worlds and I have a hard time with communicating with my words because I feel so many things and I finally figured out how to ground my two worlds so I can communicate with the collective. And it was literally through not only my, my dreams, my visions, my intuitions, and the help of the collective through Neptune, which is movies, okay? I've been watching all these movies, and it's helping me bridge the gaps between the two worlds. So here's this little analogy I have. Sorry, this is melted wax. Um, but let's just say that this is... This is where we are, okay? We'll use this. This is where this is where we are. This is where we can you see? This is where we want to be. Okay? So, this is dark, okay? It's money, hence money. This is this is light, and we need them both, like I said. So, we're like, okay, I'm trying to ascend. I'm trying to move to another world. I'm trying to get another job. I'm trying to be in another relationship. And then this happens. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Because there's dichotomy in the world, right? So the darkness gets in between you and where you need to be. But the light is always there behind you, backing your ass up. Because that's just how shit works. Then when you notice that it's a dark energy, you say, move out the fucking way. You don't allow it. So then what happens? Bloop, bloop. It moves like that. Okay? Then you can move forward a little bit more. But literally, it's a process to get from where you are to where you want to be. And so then you, you'll have this happen again. And this literally, this darkness, it is a physical world. And it uses people. Okay? It uses people's things and other things to stop you from getting to where you need to be, your mission. So you just have to continue being mindful, right? Being mindful about who's around you. And it's not even the person. It's just an energy that overtakes them that just is stopping you from getting to where you want to be, right? So you can be like this. You can choose to be like, oh, all right, well, I'm just going to chill right here. But that's going to slow down the evolution of your soul, where you're really supposed to be. So you just move it out of the way. Like boop, 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 boop. And then eventually, it's a process. Eventually, you'll get to be where you want to be. And that's right there. And you got your, your old self and your new self. And you're good. And you got the light and dark just chilling right there. So, I don't know. That's my little uh, analogy. Because I am crazy, but at least I know how to use my voice and my words and my third eye and my heart and my son and my... So, 
you guys, you could do your own research and hit me up. And so what I decided is money is not going to uh, stop the collective from knowledge. So I'm doing like, you know, donation-based life coaching and donation-based therapy and donation-based uh, uh, what, whatever I do. I, I'm just, I'm just a lucid living coach, man. I'm just a lucid living coach. It's the upside down. Yeah. You know, there's a reflection of us everywhere. And it's like the collective is showing us and wants us to open our third eye and, and be like super clean and legit because that's the only way that we're going to be able to make change. And so this is another energy of twin flame energy, right? You find your other energetic twin, your other half, because together you guys could evolve faster because then you don't have to sit there and do hella research because you don't know what the fuck is going on. There's other people, everyone has their own gifts. So if you, if you have, if you find your other half, you guys both have your two different gifts, you guys shit down and share it together and then make shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Let's travel. Let's like, let's figure out how to time, not time travel, but it's called teleport. And I think it has to do with that little, uh, that little, that little guy, that tardigrade. Or something like that. Because he can go anywhere. If we just study and research that little guy, I think we can figure out how to teleport because that would be pretty rad. Because I don't like being in the same spot. Beep, beep. But uh, I think we should all get together, you know, more often because I know there's hella people that know hell of about all these sci-fi and comic characters that I wasn't really raised with. I was raised with religion and, you know, that's... That's another tool, a tool to connect the world, okay? Just like astrology is a tool to connect the world, but they are not God, sorry. They, they are a tool to get to God, okay? That's, I mean, that's what we have. We are all one. We are, we are all God, you know, uh, energy in the universe. And yeah, we got to bridge the gap. That's what helps bridge the gap. And astronomy and physics, that Neil guy, he's amazing. That astrophysicist. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I have uh, a lot of experience because I was raised Christian with that world, which is, you know, it's like the old world, okay? This is just like everything is just expanding. Everything's connected. And then, you know, uh, astrology is the new world, okay? And then... Um, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that one guy, Neil. Oh yeah. Scientists and astrophysics and stuff. They connect those, those worlds. Okay. So those three, those are three, those are three main, main beliefs that people hold on to, but they're all one. They are all correct. They are all used to just find truth. Okay. So, oh, oh, I don't know what that means. Okay, but um, thanks guys for tuning in. Yeah, I'm the comic book geek. Hey, hey Damien. Um, yeah, and Eric, he he knows a lot about that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so if we all just get together, that'd be rad. I can't wait until you move down here, Damien, so we can like all hang out and like talk and like figure figure things out. Let's like event and ev <laughs> invent things and. And like make things great. But hey, if any of you guys are struggling at all with this whole like transformation that we're going through, because we're going to be going through a like a black hole. It's a wormhole for, of transformation. Um, a fucus, a fucus dates. I think a fucus is going to. Let me look up the fucus dates. Okay, a fucus. Okay, so Sagittarius is from November twenty first to December twenty first. And that he bridges the gaps uh, between the two worlds. And a fucus, mm -hmm. okay, so what's a fucus? Okay, so a fucus is actually the, um, uh, let's see, the November 29th 
to December 18th. Okay, so do you see that, how it bridges the gaps, the effucus? So, because it literally, here's Sagittarius, okay, then effucus, and then I think even Sagittarius again, right? Yeah, a couple days after Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is, uh, it, he bridges the gaps, okay? He is the one getting all the education. He loves education, blah, 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 that energy. Effucus is... Um, the God of the God of heaven, right? And it also is the um, serpent bearer. Okay, so this is what the constellation is. It's the snake, right? And he knows how to communicate with the, the snake. He knows how to control it and brainwash it and do all that stuff, right? And then on the other side is um, the Gemini and Orion. So yeah, so I think that's enough information. Now that I got it out to the collective, Let's do this, okay? All do your own research and you think about it. And whatever movies that you watch, whether it's Thor or, you know, uh, this movie Justice League, but you can't save the world alone. Ah! Love you guys. Night, night.